Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season we're discussing issues that I've previously wrestled with with regard to the faith. And today we'll be addressing the question, what will happen to our personal temptations if we go to heaven? We've discussed some related topics in the past and learned that people in heaven are impervious to evil temptations. However, temptations are not just a desire to do evil. Really, no one wants to do evil just because it's evil. They always have some reason why they've made the choices they have. Maybe they think it'll get them power that they want for some other cause. Maybe they genuinely think it's worth doing something bad in order to advance some cause they like. And in a lot of cases, it's just because of how they feel, and they obey their feelings out of impulse. Now, power only comes from God, which will be even more obvious in heaven. And the only causes that will succeed in heaven will succeed because God allows them to. As for emotions, we dealt with those in episode 414, check the link in the video description, and learned that the emotions needed for positive feelings will be present in heaven, but what about the impulses to take certain specific actions? This question occurred to me when I read this verse from Romans. Let us walk honestly, as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and impurities, not in contention and envy, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make not provision for the flesh in its concupiscences. Romans 13, 13 to 14. This verse's meaning is pretty clear for the most part. People walk in the daytime because they don't have anything to hide. They're not sneaking around like you would be if you wanted to break into someone's house. Rioting and drunkenness involve a loss of control over yourself and your own actions, so of course Christians wouldn't want that. Impurities and chambering refer to sexual misconduct, which can have lifelong consequences, and contention and envy result in conflict, which always has bad consequences for someone. Now, the only really confusing part is the final part. When St. Paul, who wrote the letter to the Romans, tells us not to make provision for the flesh and its concupiscences, what is he saying? Is he saying we won't be tempted to take certain actions in heaven? or that we won't be able to want some of the things we wanted on earth? When I was younger, this verse worried me for basically this very reason, but in reality, the verse says nothing of the kind. It's a piece of guidance for the faithful in Rome, telling them that their chances of faithfully living the Christian life on earth will be better if they avoid anything that tends towards temptation of the body. Not only that, but look at the way the words in this verse are arranged. He specifically says, the flesh in its concupiscences. This means that we should make provisions for legitimate needs of the flesh, like food and drink, and that we also shouldn't be afraid of the resurrection of the body at the last day, because the bodies of the saints will be free of concupiscence or temptation to do evil things. So, the question of whether our desires and preferences of this life can carry over into heaven would be one to resolve through theology instead of scripture interpretation. At the very least, however, we can know two things about temptation in heaven. First, those in heaven are impervious to evil temptations. Therefore, if there are any temptations in heaven, they will only be temptations to do good things. Secondly, everything that we need for happiness will be present there. Therefore, if we need certain emotional experiences for happiness, they will be present. Based on these two pieces of information, it's more likely that the powers and pleasures that people seek in this life through sinful means will be obtainable from God through holy means, as well as plenty more besides. That's far more perfect than preventing the saints from enjoying these good things, and therefore more worthy of God. Next, does my penitence need to be based on my love of God? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.